is you interlock the two. Now stretch them quite as far. Soccer and the fifth. Quiet, please. In exactly 15 seconds, we'll be on the air. I felt like a reptile. Like a reptile. I felt like a reptile. Chewbacca, so, talking of Chewbacca. Oh my god. I got my gown out. I should probably move into the main room so so we can properly. Hang on. The whole place is a mess. I should I should I, should, I should turn this to the ceiling so people can't see what kind of mess my house is. <laughs> just see what I'm actually noticing. Just see me. Just see me. Can't see the mess. Can't see the mess. Well, it is all. <laughs> What, what are you saying, Mr. Why is your camera not on? No, it's laughing. No. It is on. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. It was on, wasn't it? It was. It was yeah, yeah. you break it up when you're driving. Did you see on Instagram? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> special sign. Like, just uh, like a check, please, sign, but... We're recording. No, we're not rolling. That's the name of the fucking. That's the. That's the tagline of the company. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Coffee grind. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And then I'm starting to think there's lots of ways that Tony can cause him problems. Because yeah, there's yeah. a cut above one of Gaethje's eyes. It, it's, it's above this eye. And it opened up when did it, it opened up in the Alvarez fight. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know whether it's an old scar, t- scar tissue from there. I need to go back further and watch more. But that opened up in the Alvarez fight. Within 90 seconds of his fight against Poirier, like it was bleeding again. And you, you yeah. saw him. He, kind of, he, he actually goes about literally about 90 seconds into the first round. He goes... Like, yeah, it's open again. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, the thing is, like, Tony is he's he's unorthodox, but it's it's super planned unorthodox. Do you know what I mean? Like with Gagey, he's fucking. It's almost a bit like Chuck. Remember back in the day when Chuck had a chin? Mm. He 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 was an amazing wrestler. He used it all in reverse, and he had really really good knockout power. But it's one of them where that chin gets to a point where it gets tested. And obviously with someone like Gagey, he's not losing from getting knocked out. He's just getting outclassed. Because mm. was it Poirier and Alvarez that just outworked him technically as opposed to like bite down and throw? Yeah. The, the danger is, because Tony's so unorthodox, someone, I can't remember who said to me once, do you want to be punching where the person's going to be? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, if... It's, it's hard for someone like Gagey to watch footage on Tony to know where he's going to be because he's so sporadic. But that's where an, an insane flash knockout could come from because Tony's moving into a place where Gagey's just swinging. And that's where it becomes mad dangerous because like, Tony can't plan against Gagey's mentalness. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. You, you, mean, you mean the other way around? Gagey can't plan. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like Gaethje's really good at cutting the octagon down and forcing people back. And but like up until those two losses, he was doing it in a real hard-headed, like I can't yeah. be knocked out kind of way. Whereas after those losses, it, it was like he's far more. I, I mean, the last one I watched obviously was the Cowboy fight, and there were moments in that where he was stepping in, he was hitting, and then he wasn't there to be hit afterwards, yeah. and then landing his low kicks. Yeah, he, he just looked much better. I don't even think he's cut opened up in that fight either. But like, you know, if he fights like that, then you know he's he's got a good he's got a good chance of catching Tony with something. Because like, I I keep going back to the times when I've seen Tony hurt and he, and he does that forward roll. Yeah. And, and Lando Venata, do you remember when when Venata came into the UFC like That's short notice fight, short notice debut? Right, and nearly nearly knocked him out, didn't he? Yeah. In that first round. Yeah. Like if Gaethje lands one of those right hands, this is what I'm about to say. That's an issue. You know when Pettis got um, yeah, when Pettis, Pettis him. When he when he when he clipped him and he started like glitching like a video game doing super rolls, <laughs> if Gagey had hit him with that same punch, would he have got up? Because the thing is, it's that difference in power. Look at what he did to Edson Barboza. Like Wait, James Vick, man. James Vick was bad, but Barboza was just on the edge. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, Vick was more like a, a bigger tree falling down, whereas Barboza looked like a dead spider on the floor. Did yeah, didn't he? he? Did he looked like a beetle on the yeah, yeah. That was that was all karma of all universes coming together for Terry Etim to be like, "Hey Terry, how do you feel about that knockout with Barbosa?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm over it now." It's like we've got you back, dude. Hold my beer. Yeah. And that... Gates just fucking flew in, and that was on the end. That was on the super end of his punch, mm. and he walked off like he planned it. Well, so this is the thing because we're gonna do we're gonna do some kind of inside the octagon for, for the. Uh... Um, for the event as well, but I mean, but we're, the war rooms will be the ones where I'm, I'll talk more because I'm well, you can't shut me up on a war room because because uh, you know we control the edit, <laughs> yeah, and I'm not going to interrupt you. So, so there's loads of there's loads of different things that I've seen in the Gaethje fights where, like that that knockout that he landed on James Vick, there were two times that he stepped in and and tested that range. So, so like like he knew where Vick was going to be. Same thing with um, Cowboy. Well, yeah, with Cowboy as well, same thing. Although Cowboy was he, he was Cowboy, he was catching Cowboy moving forward. Yeah, like he, he was actually counter striking in that one. Cowboy um, almost felt to me like he was ready to lose that fight. Okay. That's no disrespect to Cowboy. He's been half the time though, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's come out. Have you seen what it's been out in the in the papers? Not in the papers, in the press, on socials. It's been a lot of uh, coverage of Cowboy saying. He realised a week before the, the Connor fight, he didn't want to be there. Wasn't interested. Then he and there's 
but it's a narrative I've heard on Cowboy a lot. We, we heard it a lot building up before he had a kid. Then when he had danger, he sort of self, felt refocused and was like, yo, I'm on this. Mm-hmm. I mean, what you got to look at is the last is the last two people he's faced, Connor and just, and just engaging. Yeah. I mean, that's two fucking savages. Oh, yeah, for right? sure. Yeah. yeah. When you no, don't he's, he's like not, fight. not getting easy fights. He's just... But he, he always struggles with the psychology of it, which is why he has to fight so regularly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, which true. Part of the reason why he's so active and, like, you know, some fighters just like to stay busy. I, I like to stay busy back in the day because then I didn't have to, I didn't have to constantly like build up to a to a fight. I was always kind of in that cycle, you know. Yeah. So like, like you know, a fight a month was good for me. I think for Cowboy, it's it's easier because the last time he felt that uncomfortable wasn't that long ago. Yeah. And if a lot of time passes before, you know, a lot of time passes between fights, there's time for that. To, to chill out and to relax, and then all of a sudden to realise it's coming upon you again and start getting anxious. Yeah, and that's, I think, I mean, anxiety is a motherfucker. It doesn't matter it, how, how you face it in your day-to-day life. Everyone gets a little bit, some people get more than others. But if you imagine if that's your job, you get anxious about your job and you almost build this defence mechanism that is, if I'm, if I'm in it and I'm, and I'm balls deep in it, then it's sort of, you live in that uncomfortable state and you get used to it and you can handle it. Whereas, like say, if you're out of it for two minutes, then you have to dip back in. So I know a lot of people, they pass the driving test because they need to. Then they don't drive for a few months. And then they're like, oh, I'm scared. Scared to get back in. You're like, the fuck are you on about? It's, just... it, it, it's like working out, though. It's like, like Henry Rollins talks about it. And, and I've always loved the way that he put it. Because he, he said it, it's, it's, it's like a muscle in itself. And he calls the muscle something like, I don't want to, but here I go. Or I don't want to, but I'm going to do it anyway. And like... And, and I'll, I'll tell you this, I mean, this is personal experience and I know this and I've, I've fallen into this trap a few times myself when I, I knew it was coming. I, after a fight, if I take a week off, getting back in the gym a week later is so difficult. Yeah. yeah. Because when, like tolerance sorry. for hard work has like drops off almost immediately. Yeah. If I give myself two days and then start training light again from like Tuesday or Wednesday, doesn't happen. Yeah. I give myself a week off. It, it, it's literally like a tolerance. It's it's like your tolerance drops off, and and you have to kind of build that tolerance back up again. And it's the same. I think a lot of fighters struggle with anxiety in the same way. Like they 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 have to build they build their tolerance up to the anxiety, and then they stay close to that 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 anxious line so it doesn't become unfamiliar. But that's why I think it's so emotional in the cage. The amount of times you'll see almost like a wave crashing over fighters. I mean. That Mark De Casey, you know, when he won his last one and was just beyond emotion. Because obviously, was it was it three in a row, four in a row that he's lost? Something and, like that, yeah. And then obviously managed to put it all together, had a good performance. But it's that absolute overwhelming feel. I think, I mean, I don't know. It's it's hard to explain, but I think it's uh, it's a good place to be. I mean, I'm looking forward to see Cowboy. I mean, the whole card's insane. The Is fact it? that we the, the amount of. Um, good fights we've got is fucking sick i'm just excited to be able to see something yo cool isn't it is that ninjago yeah man see i haven't got an i couldn't get into ninjago because it had too many ninjas that i wanted so i thought if i haven't got any i'm good it's too modern for me like this 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 dude's this dude's driving a speedboat i don't need to see ninjas in speedboats no but you build it anyway well i didn't like veronica smashed that out in like 10 seconds. Not even looking anymore. I've been building the old stuff. I've been building the old stuff. The uh, the old castles and the old Robin Hood stuff. Nice. I'll show you in a second. Now now we've uh, now we've moved back into the 21st century and we're using colour again. Is this is this the week we're going to colour and we're both wearing black and, and like dark colours? That's true. No, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing brown, man. I'm, I'm walkie coloured today. I went full camo. I was like, there you go. Look. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, there you go. I have to get a bit warmer, man. I'll set this off a little bit. Yeah, you're gonna be stinking. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I, I checked this out as well. I found I found the original design for my, you know, the lotus flower that was on that's on my stomach. Yes. Oh shit! That's the original one. That's the original, like that's hand drawn. Yeah, and then you added the smoke, right? And then I added the text over the top, which is that. And I've extended that, and I had to curve it so it so it so it curved across my stomach, and then. I added the, uh, the it's, it's steam, it's steam coming out of the lotus flower from when it opens up in the morning and you know, all the, the, the mist steam vapour comes out of it. And that's you know, cutting through the, the writing. 
you know, during the tattoo, you know, when you when you were designing that and thinking this is going to look sick, you yeah. know, when you got to the steam bit, we like for fuck's sake, what was I thinking, mate? I tell you what, it was if if I didn't know if I didn't know. Sorry, let me say that again. If I knew how that was going to feel, or you 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 probably feel the same about your ribs. Like the thing is with it's fucking awful, isn't it? This yeah, like thinking about it. And the thing is with tattooing, like. An hour, most places is fine. A couple hours, most places is fine. Three hours in some places is still all right. But yeah. then there comes a point where you just, your adrenaline no, nose dives yeah. and you no longer have that barrier between you and the pain. Like, yeah. I remember my, my back done. Like my back took eight hours. Yeah. And, and the guy that did it, Norm, he was working out of a, a studio uh, on Melrose Avenue in Hollywood called Spotlight. And um, I think it was owned by a guy called Bob Roberts, who's like a tattoo, like a bit of a tattoo legend. I've got a little funny story about him while I was getting that tattoo done, which I'll tell you in a second. Um, but, so Norm was a graffiti artist. He was really fucking heavy handed. He was this little dude with like full tattoos all up his face, big stretched earlobes. And all the way throughout the day, he had these shady people coming in to visit him because he was, he was a graffiti artist, but he had a lot of different links as well. You know, and, and all these guys coming in, not much was said. They're just kind of coming and much hey, I'm about them people. I'm yeah. all about them people. All nice guys. All, all appreciated the work I was having done. But anyway, the point is, the tattoo took eight hours. He did almost five hours straight through and then stopped to have a bit of food for about 30 minutes and then just smashed out the rest of it. After the first three hours, I've got the shakes coming on. And I'm like, and my, my head was, I don't, I'm not a big fan of small tattoos. I like, if it's a big space, I want a big tattoo to fill it. Yeah, it needs to be artwork. It needs to be like, like the amount of ta- amount of fighters I see, and they've got this fucking tiny tattoo on their chest. And I'm like, that's your whole pet gone now. Matt Linland, what are you doing, dude? What's oh, your, what's your little snaky no, worm? Is it Anthony Anthony Hamilton? I'm sure he's got two tiny, tiny tattoos, yeah. and he's got a fucking massive old chest as well. He's a big heavyweight. He's You're the freak. Canvas. You're wasting canvas, man. Absolutely. It's like opening a blank page of paper and drawing a line across like half. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's anyway. Funny. So anyway, so I'm having a big piece done, but I'm also, I don't want to take too much time away from training. So I'm trying to get them done fast. And I also don't like unfinished tattoos. They drive me nuts. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to get this one done, smashed out quickly in one day, get it done, get it finished. Now just deal with it, with the discomfort. Do that. I was like, that became almost psychedelic. That, that yeah. one, like the la- those last couple hours, I was just, I was just shaking and I did the same. So my, my stomach, I did over two days. Yeah. So I was in on the first day, I had the Lotus done. Though that was that was already done. That took that I did I had that done a couple of weeks earlier, I think. That was already healed. But then I had the all the lettering done. I had that done on one day and went back the next day and had the steam put in. See, the next day is always that was the worst. Because he's got the latex gloves on. Yeah. It wasn't it was it was less about the tattoo, the needle, it was more about where he was dragging his glove yeah. across the old yeah. the, the tattoos from yesterday. Oh or when they run Tony's got this habit with he used to have with me because he knew he was fucking with me because he's a good friend. So he, he used to get dry paper towel and wipe it. So I'd be asking, hit me with a bit of Vaseline, dude, or like spray it. And he's just like, yeah, well, in a minute. And you know, because he's just, he's run out of the bit that's on the lollipop stick or whatever. I'm like, just a little bit because he started and he started in his kitchen. So my whole goal at that point was get enough people to him so people, he had people to practice on. So the ribs came out of, that was always my idea to have ribs, but I had it at his house and that went a little bit trippy because one of our mates, Rich Page, his daughter at the time was about, I don't know, seven or eight, like super, like interested in everything as a seven or eight year old is. And I'm lying in Tony's kitchen on a proper tattoo bed. It was all set up, but just in the back end of his kitchen. And Tony's doing my ribs and this kid is in my face asking me a million questions. And Rich, because he thinks it's funny, is then poking me in the ribs. And Tony's <laughs> just, fuck it. And the weird thing was, and I've had this since, when I, know, when I know I've been tattooed for too long, I can start to feel individual beads of sweat. Yeah. <laughs> on their own personality. And it's so I can feel it forming. I can feel it dripping. I can feel it falling. I can feel all the emotion this, this like one fucking sweat drop is doing. And I'm like, I've had enough now. Yeah. That will do. 
totally hear you. I, I, know, I know exactly what you're saying. Cause, like, same thing with my chest. When I have my chest done, and you know my chest piece, it's like, yeah. it's like all the way up and across, down yeah. the centre. So I was originally getting this done at a studio in London, and there was a, a, a tattoo artist was coming over and doing a guest spot. But he was coming over from Brazil. Fred Al Oliveira is an amazing artist, and I love his style as well. So when I found out he was coming over to London, I'm like, like book me in. Like, I'll, what can you do? Can you do me two days? Let me let me get my whole chest done by you. Because I had this concept designed out. I had an idea of what I wanted, and I know I wanted him to do it. So I'm like, okay, two days. Let's get it sorted out. I was booked in, organized, and then he had to cancel the London trip. So he was only now going to be in Copenhagen. So I'm like, ah, oh, Copenhagen's a short flight, still worth doing. So I went over and did the two days there. So I'm literally just in the, in town, in the town for the tattoo. I spent all day, both days at the studio, mate. And, and, and what was worse is he'd, he'd, so he'd finished the design and he laid it all out to make sure it, it fit on correctly. Then he did one of the wolves. Completely. Completely. That took about, that took just over five hours. So then I left the tattoo studio and walked back to, back to the hotel I was staying in, lay down in the bed, and all of a sudden it dawned on me that I, I'd got to go back the next day and have the same thing done again on the other side and the fucking middle. Yeah. Ugh. But it's when your brain... The, the problem is, you're only looking at your watch within the first hour of being there thinking, it's got to be three hours. That's yeah. easy. <laughs> three hours. Easy. Maybe four. How are we looking? Because... The thing is, when you can't always see what they're doing, it's kind of a bit better mm. because you can feel it. But the thing is, my body sometimes plays tricks because I, I've had it before where I've been tattooed like here and here's burning. Yeah. So I can't tell, genuinely can't tell if he's tattooed because mine goes all the way down. I can't tell where he is. And I'm like, I'm sure he's done my neck. I'm sure that, that bit's finished. And then I'm like almost getting nervous to turn and look. And you know, when you get that cramp, like this side of your neck has got cramp from just watching. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. My, my big problem at the minute is I still need to get Libby this side. So I've got Millie this side. And I mean, she's 12 in a few days. And Libby's now way more than old enough to read. And the amount of times she keeps asking me, and it's like almost like she's questioning my fucking, like, my manhood. <laughs> Yeah, my love for him. Yeah, so like, do you actually love me, Daddy? Because I'm just gonna sharpie it in every morning, like fifty first dates. Mate, I'd take that over a fucking rib tattoo. <laughs> I'd even pay for the sharpies. Mate, the worst bit was Tony was learning his craft when he started this. So I used to go and see him when he wasn't tattooing one of the other people I'd farmed into him. So I'm lying there, and he was like, "Oh, we need to do your ribs," and it would be literally, I would drop him off from work, and he'd be like. Do you fancy an hour? I'm like, it's never an hour, but fair enough, let's do it. And when I lift my top up, he'd say, oh, this line work's horrible. My, I've got way better since then. Let me do it again. Uh. So the six hours that he's done rough, he's now going over the top of for another six hours for me to get home and only have the same amount finished. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. looks better, but it's only the, oh, man. And I'm like, bro, just finish it. Just colour it in. Mate, don't have I've had this unfinished tiger on my leg for I don't know how long. I, know. I literally don't know how long. It, it must be it must be seven years now. And the thing is, I've been back to Vegas a few times where Robert Foe's tattoo studio is, but he's now moved to Hawaii. So now I have to make a, a, sep a special separate trip out to Hawaii to get it finished. And the yeah. truth is, I don't want to get it done. <laughs> it was no. way more painful than I was expecting. Way more painful. And I, like, and I was surprised as well because I thought, oh, it's just, you know, it's... It's a, you know, it's a big area. It's like an arm. Like, arms aren't too bad. No. Like, there are a couple of spots on arms which are bad. Like, for me, like, like inside bicep, top of the forearm, both sides yeah. was bad. And then tops of shoulders was bad. Yeah, mine's here. Inside was all right. Yeah, that didn't bother me. No problem at all. And elbows, everyone was like, oh, elbows are terrible. Like, I, like I pretty much got that elbow tattooed in. Like, coloured in. Yeah. Both of them, to be honest. Like, I, I didn't think they were bad. They swelled up. It depends how crispy you are. If you've got real crispy elbows that look like the moon under a magnifying glass, do you know what I mean? Like like a fucking, it's just all cracked. They're supple, mate. They're moisturised. That's it. You look after your elbows, it don't hurt. I moisturise them with people's face sweat. Yeah, that's kind of weird, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I moisturise it with people's souls. <laughs> <laughs> Soul moisturising. Um, 
Yeah, man. I'm ready to get some more, though. There's, I, I've got so many, so many more planned out. I, I do need to get the Tiger finished. Yeah. I, I just... And the thing is, now, once that's done, then I've got the whole other thigh. Yeah. It's done. And you can't be unbalanced. Mm -mm. But now, now, you see, I've finished the design for my back, so I think, I'm, I, think I want to get that done. Yeah. I see, I've got, lo I've got loads until I lie there. It's out when we're in Vegas and uh, Thomas Asher was doing uh, my leg. Yeah. It's not even a big piece, but then you lie there and you're like, I'm, I've got enough tattoos to like justify my position in a tattoo world, if that makes sense. It's, that, it's not like it's my first go. I don't know what I'm doing. I've had a few. So when I haven't had one for a while, I forget how much it hurts or how much how annoying it is. So he literally threw this into my leg in about an hour and a half, two hours. It was fucking ridiculous. But there were still bits that I was like, you know, when your toes curl to the point where you really need to squeeze down. There's too many people in the room for their PDD, that much of a drastic movement for someone to go, is it hurting? <laughs> that hurts, done it. And especially when I got mystery on the camera watching me and filming my reactions, and I'm like, I'm kind of baked, I'm a little bit buzzed, and I'm trying to fucking get through this two hours of tattoo, and it was, yeah, not nice. Yeah, that, that's something else. That's that's something I have to, because like, so like when we were in Vegas, we'd had a smoke before I went in and, and got the and got the tattoo done. That makes it worse for me. The amount of people I've spoken to and they're like, oh yeah, no, no, I just I have a smoke and get the tattoo done. It's better. It's not. It's like when you say like the, like you can start feeling that bead of sweat. Yeah, like that's from the beginning of the tattoo because I'm like, I can feel everything and yeah, yeah. not pleasant, not pleasant. That's, well, that, that, that my spine's not going to be fun. That's that's the bit I'm getting done next. I'm having, yeah. No, it's proper wank. And it's, yeah, it's spine and collarbone, blech, horrible. Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting to that stage where I'm just doing space fillers. Yeah, just tiny little. Well, I was yeah. thinking that the other day because I was, after we had a bit of a, a bit of a cheeky meeting and uh, I've got, I'm rough house in the brain at the minute. Mm. I've already switched on to rough house. So I was looking on the back of my laptop at the stickers that we've already made. And I was like, I need some more rough house stickers. But I normally make stickers a similar size. But then it occurred to me that I probably need half a dozen, which are like little diddlers. Yeah. Still cut out, but space fillers. Because mm -hmm. I've got, at the minute, I've got a little bit of room, but I don't want to start covering up too much of what I've got. So yeah. we'll, we'll have to do a page like the, uh, like the wallpaper off, um, off uh, Willy Wonka. Not, not, not stickers you can not taste, fair. but like, you know, like, like, so like four or five different small stickers on it. I, I can get that. I can get a sheet done. Yeah, we'll have to do that. Oh, I know this is not interesting for anybody listening to the podcast, but I had a MacBook cover show up at my house. Yes, you did. Okay. It's ready to go on a MacBook. Oh, is that right? That is right. But that'll be, uh, that can be an unboxing unveiling at some point for your... Uh... It'll be a trainee Raptor. I'm going to be yeah. a B-Tech Raptor. <laughs> That's it. I love that. When it, when it came up, it was like, B-Tech Raptor wants to follow you. And I was like, that's either someone mad cool that we already know, or it's someone just skeezing on in, just trying to slide. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it's strangely organic. Uh, we didn't even know, but but the 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 raptors are multiplied, and now the, now now there's a Padawan learner. Now there's a there's an apprentice Jedi raptor out there working away, doing some good stuff as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, all good, all good. So yeah, yeah so it's uh, well that all that MacBook will be uh, your new. Um, system, your new office system, if you like, for uh, a few new shows that we can't talk about yet, can we, really? No, top secret shit. Top secret. Top secret but going to be good. Yeah, we've got that straw weight thing coming out soon. I've just finished writing the script for that. It's, it's actually pulled up on my laptop still. So once we're done recording here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get stuck into that. Oh, shit. Time to pick the kids up from school. Mate, you can switch that alarm off now. <laughs> there's, there's a bit of me. Please. If, I've been off for six weeks and I've not turned it off now. So you know that the first day they're back at school, I'm going to forget them. Because <laughs> it's, I'm going to call that the interrupter alarm. Yeah, it is. It's the, it's the, re it's the real world alarm, isn't it? Just dropping you back in. It, you another 24 hours have passed. I'm a day older. Honestly, the problem is because there are no days anymore and there's not technically any time, it's getting to... I mean, that's at quarter to four my alarm goes off to say... So, because in my office, my office is really small, so I pull everything out of my office so I can work in it, and then I put everything back. But I can't leave my office without putting everything back, so I have to give myself a good enough warning. 
And usually I'd have already walked the dogs. I'd have done loads of different errands. I'd have done loads of work. And then I get that reminder. Now it feels like I've been up for about 15 minutes. And my phone's like, yo, it's three o'clock. <laughs> Fucking terrifying, man. Dude, my sleep's all over the place at the moment. I'm just kind of sleeping when I'm feeling tired. Yeah. Because cause like, like the other night I got into a, it's a bit of a Lego cycle. Because I've got like, all this old Lego from back in the day. Like the old grey castle. Yeah. And Robin Hood stuff. And it's... It's all stuff that I would like play out in the garden with. So it's filthy. Yeah. So I've been washing all of it, lovingly washing all of it, letting it air dry. And then once it's dried, I want to build it up again. Cause I, you know, but, so, but then I get into a bit of a cycle and I'm building the set. And then I've got two more sets that are dry, ready to go. I just I can't, I can't stop. I can't no. stop. So then I, I, then I realize it's three, four o'clock in the morning. And I've been listening to waiting waiting for the sun by the doors on repeat for the past six hours. Mm. And now I think I'm Jim Morrison. Mm. Oh, dude, all the time. It's like something's playing and it's just in a loop. And I'm like, I'll sort that in a minute. Yeah, and then man. before you know it, it's five hours later. I did it literally last night. Stace went to bed. We've been watching Save Me 2 with Lenny James on, um, on Sky. It's good. It's really fucking dark, but it's, it's good. And uh, we were watching that and she was like, look, I've got to go to bed because to be fair to her, bless her, she's a key worker. She's up at five every day. She's exhausted. So I was like, okay. And I'd literally just opened my laptop, started putting together this rough house thing that I've got this concept. And before you knew it, I was sat there till half two. But I was sat there buzzing till half two because I was like, they're going to fucking love this. And then this, this is going to be sick. And then at one point I had like seven bandanas. Just <laughs> Well, this is this is how I know you've been up late because I wake up in the morning to a fucking load of different designs on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's really good. The nice thing is, is my brain's that fucked because I'm sat on top of it that you'll normally pick elements from A, B, and C, and then D, F, and X, and then you'll put it into one that we like. It's a concept. Do you know what I mean? It's a compromise. No, I, I like these, man. I'm, I'm I'm excited for people to see them as well because. It bring, brings back a taste of the old school with the rough house. And now now Jimmy and I have got our, got our own place that we can teach out of. We can, you know, we can resurrect the rough house, as it were. Yeah, it feels good, man. It feels really right. good. This co-main event, Dominic Who's Cruz. Got... Yo, okay, right. Tell me. Because I've been asked a bunch. Yeah, well, someone said to me the other day, in fact, shout out to Ed. Um, he's uh, basically, he uh, he ordered from our from our shop and I was trying to put stuff together, trying to get a few bits put together and we didn't have one of the things that I needed. And so I had to I'll show you these. I will do. I will. Know what these are. Yeah. Cool. Right. Sorry. So Ed, I, I, I rang him up because we didn't have one of the items and I was like, look, you can either wait for it or I can send this and then get this out to you. And we had a good chat. And to be fair, we almost, we almost sat talking about fighting for fucking too long. You know, and you realise you've rang someone for a 30-second thing, and I was like, fuck, sorry. So, yeah, shout out to him. He's, he's a wicked dude and, and really accommodating for our, our problem. But I saw a few things about Dana White defending his decision to give Dominic Cruz a title shot. Mm -hmm. I've also seen other people kicking off about it. And I was like, yo, if anyone has ever like, ragged on Dominic Cruz, it's me. So, to justify that, if I had have never heard him talk and he'd never have been a commentator, all I could ever do is just respect his mad skill set and what he's achieved. Like, what he's done in this sport is fucking insane. The fact he's beat Faber twice, I disagree with one of them, but he's beat Faber twice and stepped up against a Faber that was unbe unbeaten for, like, 16 fucking fights. I know he lost, but he learned everything because he never lost again until, was it DJ? No. No, he beat DJ. Beat DJ, but he lost to... Garbrandt. Garbrandt. No, before that. In between Cruz and Garbrandt, he lost, didn't he? Wasn't it a decision? I don't know. Anyway, the, what he's done and who he's what beaten... He's look. And what, who he's beaten, what he's achieved, he's fucking amazing. Like, the fact he lost to Garbrandt could have been down to health or whatever it was. But uh, you can't deny the man for, for stepping up. And if he gets rid of fucking um, the cringe... He's going to be everyone's hero. <laughs> that's true. No, just Faber and then oh, Garbrandt. That's it. Yeah, so, yeah, he beat DJ, but before DJ was a champ, right? It wasn't like it was a... He beat DJ at Bantamweight. If I remember right, that was DJ's last fight before he moved down to flyweight. 
to take over the world. Yeah. Take over the world. That was it. So I'm I'm excited, man. I'm really excited, even though it's Dominic Cruz, because he's a fucking brilliant fighter. Mm. Like, it's, it's, that's, yeah, that's see, that's what I was saying. Because it's, it's like, I think it, it, gets, it gets to a point in your career where you've achieved enough to be a part of that like elite set of fighters. Like, and I and I likened it to the movie Gladiator. Yeah, you know where Maximus was ruining everybody and no one could touch him. What did they do? They brought back the old guy, Titus of Gaul. Yeah, I right? who rolled in with his bronze armor and and looked like a badass, and everyone was like, "Oh, this guy used to be good. He's got a chance." Yeah. Like, you, like those guys. Even if they're, even if Dominic Cruz was five years older, he still he was still that fighter. This he still got that those skill sets. The question is whether his physicality can hold up. And I think that's maybe why people are start people are, are having a problem with it because there are younger, fresher, you know, streaking fighters that could have stepped up there. But at the same time, it's 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 a good test for for Cejudo, and it's also validation for Cejudo as a champion yeah, if he does know. beat beat, beat Cruz. Yeah. Because Cruz is only, I mean, he's, he's literally only lost twice, hasn't he? Yeah, and he's still, uh, the, the yeah, thing yeah. is, twice. like, he's not, he's not been on a streak where he's lost and lost and lost. He's just not been fit because of training or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. if anything, this is a blessing in disguise because Cruz has already got everything upstairs. His gas tank was was conditioned when he was fucking 11 or whatever it is. So, so he's, like, I've got no doubt in his skill set and his ability the, the thing that's always been a weird swinging pendulum has been his training and injuries during that time because the guy's obsessed. You know he is. Yeah. So when he trains, he trains hard. And when he pushes it too hard, that's when his knees are fucked. Because isn't he something... Is he still not even 30 yet? Or, like, he's young, but he's True. been... Yeah, he's been fighting for a fucking long time. 35. Yeah, so think about, like, what how long he's been about. Huh? He was still really young. Well, I'm 39 now, so I'm old as white dog shit. But 39, <laughs> 35, and he's not fought for, say, a couple of years, two or three years? So, I tell you, I will say this. Like, I'm just looking at his record now. Like, there's a lot of five fives on here. There's yeah. a lot of five fives on here. Or, like, like towards the end of his WEC days. Like, like, and this, this is the other argument for him getting a title shot as well, is that he, like... His best performance in the UFC, as far as Mizugaki, Mizugaki, which was a, a first first minute finish. But was it, who was faster, Garbrandt or Cruz? Because they had a big thing about it, didn't they? Because Garbrandt beat Mizugaki as well. They both pinged him real quick. Oh, did they? Well, that yeah. was a, that was one one minute one second for. Uh, uh, I think oh, Garbrandt, yeah. been... Garbrandt did him in forty eight seconds. Garbrandt beat him quicker. Yeah, man. But it was like there's there's a lot of decisions on on that uh, on his record five fives five fives then there's the, the stoppage I'm going back in time here stoppage over Mizugaki then f- four five fives in a row over what? DJ Faber Jorgensen and Benavides okay which are all legit contenders yeah absolutely but of those five fives I would have said he probably won most of those rounds. Oh, yeah, dominated him like he does because he's the dominator. Oh, yeah, but it's, it's solid work. I think the thing is, if you'd have, if you'd have said to me, who do you need? my life difficult, though, because yeah. I've got to research this. That's like, that's like a day's worth of research. It was nice doing, uh, doing Gaethje because at least they're either explosive or, or fast. You can watch it while you're having a piss. It's literally, right. you watch them all. The thing is, we, we need a hero. We're holding out for a we hero. need a hero. Nah, 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 nah. You couldn't say that without me singing that. Nah, well, that's partly why I did it. I was gonna, I was gonna make you sing uh, Chili Pepper Scar Tissue earlier when you were talking about tattoos, but I didn't think you want to drop into that. Um, I don't think I know the lyrics to that one. I know the song. Tissue that I wish you saw. Is oh yeah, a... t- that's yeah. I remember that one. I'm not gonna sing it at you though. No, I won't either because people will turn off even if we're in color. Go on. After now, we've obviously we've said crew should come and save the day and fucking get a movie made after him for it. What are you telling me about your blue and yellow t-shirt? Is it PE? Is that your PE kit? No, these are these are these are OG for reptile. I was just, I was just I was in rummaging, the bamboo. Mate, I was rummaging around in my in my wardrobe earlier today. I found this one. That's that's literally the very first one you did. Yeah, man, just, just wait. Blue, it's really pixelated. Just hold it still for a sec. Hang on a minute. 
Sorry. I hope everyone good. else is feeling the same as what I'm saying. Man, it's so pixelated. I remember it, but what? So we went Vig on the front. Didn't we go for a full mandala on the back? Yo, you're going to have to put pictures of this on your Instagram because it's kind of breaking up. That's is still it? there. That's still there, man. Cool, right? Lovely, that. And then this one, which was one of my wild ideas at four o'clock in the morning when I probably sent you a text message. I was like, dude, dude, order me a yellow shirt. Is this order Char me a yellow T-shirt. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie Brown. <laughs> it's the Charlie Brown. Mate. That classic. Dude, I can literally remember standing printing them thinking, I wish this was my job. <laughs> that's it's it's my anniversary my my two year anniversary is tomorrow with full reptile how about that in, mate it's honestly the amount of shit that's why to be fair i'm not massively into facebook but i keep it just because i like it reminding me of cool shit that i've forgotten yeah do you know what i mean so yeah, yeah it's yeah. nice man. that's cool man covered a lot of ground oh for real it's on the card that we haven't talked about because it's i mean it's stacked isn't it yeah, so you've got Enganu and Ro uh, Roizenstreich, Yardinio. Yeah, you see, I'm worried about that one. I, I, because I keep having flashbacks of Enganu against Derek Lewis. Yeah, and I just, I don't want it to be a, I don't want it to be a standoff for three rounds. Because, and and we'll know within the first sixty seconds because one of the commentators will go, "There's no way this is going to be fine." <laughs> There's no, there's no way this is going to the judges' scorecards. I'm like, oh. Cheers, lads. Really? I, 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 even think, I even think I said that to Felder once when we were on comms. And comms was like, ha, ha. It Felder's like, there's no way this is going five rounds. I'm like, dude, you've literally just cursed it. Yeah. And then we sat there for three fives while two guys stared at each other. Did... I, I, don't, I don't think it will be because I think Rosenstrike will. I think he's got the, he's got the kickboxing credentials and knowledge yeah. to know how to find his way into a fight, whether he's countering or attacking. Completely, so and Garnu does with it. I mean, it, it's it's gonna it should be a fun one to watch. I just hope they don't stare at each other and and no. Well, before and Garnu's listened to a lot of stuff. Sorry, I know you just said Qatar. I've just just to go on to Garnu. He the, when he came in in his early, it was like when uh, Czech Congo came in and he's unknown. And it just this fucking explosion of of athleticism is insane when it first happens. With someone like Ngano, he's sort of got conditioned into the into the winning life and and like making it. And with his, he's getting custom suits. He's at the PI. He's really fucking dropped into his is that like into his stride. Because if you look back at Ngano's story, it's one of super 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 poor background and like struggle. Whereas now, when he saw Derek Lewis, that was a threat to that. And that was a threat to what he's enjoying. Whereas, as much as you'll see that in uh, Rosenstroy. He's way more athletic than Derek Lewis. I think he's going to push it, like you said. He's got that absolute hunger. And, I mean, if that punch that he knocked out Orlovsky was legit, which I'm not I'm not saying that it was fake or it was not not real, but Orlovsky's chin has been something of a question for the past few years. Like, what he hit him with, if that would have knocked out Anthony Smith or Anthony Johnson or someone like that, then it's going to be fucking amazing. Imagine Ngano getting absolutely bingoed like he did to Overeem. Dude, I, I, I think I think he'd have knocked out a fucking moose with that punch, to be honest. I mean, that yeah. was that was ridiculous. I, I it, there's no doubt he's got the power to do it. it it's it's the it's the technical abilities is, is where where we're not sure. Because it, you know, like sometimes the fight has to come to him. Yeah. Whereas with Rosenstrike, I mean he's he's got kickboxing credentials, he moves well. Uh, yeah. and I, feel, I feel like he's I feel like no matter how the fight's going, unless, unless he's worried about getting chinned. Which again, yeah. he might be because I mean, you know, anybody standing in front of in front of either of those guys would be fucking you know. <laughs> that's got to be a recurring narrative in your mind, doesn't it? This guy could probably kill me with one punch. Yeah, or uh, kill a moose, like you said. Imagine, uh, imagine if someone made an emulator. It's an Engano em emulator of just a GIF of him just doing that punch that he landed over him. But you could put different things in to see what what like, the limitations are. <laughs> just kill a double decker boss. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Could you kill a two-bedroom house? Yep. But a three-bedroom? No. We'll find our limit. It's, it's uh, a two-bedroom yeah. house. Imagine yeah. someone could do that, right? A lot of fun. That'd be a lot of fun. Which, which models of car could he punch over 100 metres into the air? <laughs> <laughs> this Austin Allegra went miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 
Yeah, Stevens against Cater is going to be a lot of fun. That'd be good. I, I just wish that was a main event of a fight night over five rounds. That's the, that's the only thing. I just I, I just feel like I feel like that one could quite easily go go fifteen minutes, and it's going to be a great fifteen minutes. And at the end of it, we're going to be like, I kind of want I kind of want another two rounds. Well, yeah, because it was that when he fought Rodriguez, when uh, Jeremy Stevens fought Yay Rodriguez. Give me two more rounds on top of what they did. And I would say the same thing with Keita when he fought Zabit. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the same scenario. You go, I give him two more rounds because that last round Zabit was starting to struggle just purely because of the, of the style that he fights with. Yeah. Whereas like Keita and Stevens, because they walk forward and they, they use, you know, subtle head movement. And I mean, Stevens is excellently conditioned considering how many power punches he throws. But even throughout his career, he's got better at measuring the power in his punches. And yeah. even, it, you know, it's like 50%, 50%, 80%. He finds those opportunities to throw more power now. And I, I think Kate is a, an excellent fighter anyway. That, I, that's going to be a lot of fun, that one. I'm, I'm interested in the old heavyweight fight uh, in the prelims, Olenek against uh, Verdum. Because Olenek's thing subs, and he's against Verdum, who's most likely going to be the di most difficult person he's ever going to have to face on the ground. Yeah. So, like, is that going to be a, is that gonna be a, a, a messy kick? Because Olenek's striking is not pleasant no. to watch. But Vadum's looks good. I mean, Vadum's got, got good, good Muay Thai. Yeah. I even remember going back to, was it Brandon Vary for in London, eight, yeah. UFC 85? Yeah. I even remember back then thinking, oh, shit, like for a, for a jiu-jitsu guy, Vadum's got some kickboxing skills. Well, to be fair, he fought Orlovsky at UFC 70 in Manchester, and it went to a decision. That was before Orlovsky was released for the first time. And it was, a, it was all questioned because it was a prelim. So it was, a, it was one of the prelims or one of the first, the first fight on the card where... Orlovsky for Vadum, and he won a decision, but it was all stand up. So, I mean, you look at Orlovsky before UFC 70, he's knocking everyone out with one punch. So, for Vadum to survive that, I mean, I know it's a while ago. And I, I know that's why. I'll, have to, I'll go back and watch that. I'm sure. I'm, sh I'm sure it is. I might be wrong, but I, I don't think I am. Do you, re you reckon Pettis does Cowboy again? Yeah, Orlovsky. Lost to Orlovsky. Decision. Sorry, do uh, Cowboy Pettis. Yeah, you reckon Pettis does Cowboy again, or do you reckon Cowboy's got a better shot at welterweight? All day. Uh, since when we got, watched Pettis' last fight, Pettis against Tony, I was all over that. Mm. I was all over that. And, and I think, personally, and this is only my opinion, that he was coming up for a contract renewal, wasn't he, Pettis? Because then Sergio has jumped and he's gone to Bellator, which is... It's one of them. I mean, obviously, if you go somewhere and you feel like you're being treated nicely, that's good. Notice I didn't use the word tret. It's a real bugbear. I fucking hate that. You know, so was, how did they tret you? Fuck off. <laughs> anyway, um, Pettis, when he fought Tony, was building up. And obviously, if he'd have beaten Tony, that would have been massive. But he didn't because he wasn't it his hand that he broke. And uh, Duke Rufus pulled him out of the fight. They were like, you're done. We're not, we're not going to start fucking with your health. Yeah. So then when he fought, um, I can't remember who he fought last, but he just looked like he just didn't want to be there, had enough. Pettis, so his last two were Nate Diaz and Fajaya. He, yeah. he fought Diaz at 2-4-1 and then uh, Diego, uh, Carlos Diego Fajaya at 2-4-6. That one, he, did, he did, really didn't look himself in that one. And that, and again, I think he's partly down to the fact that he went back down to lightweight. Yeah. I, just think, I just think he's hit his limit in his career where lightweight is a healthy cut for him. Yeah, he just didn't. He looked. He looked. He just looked like he was looking. For, I'm sure, it was like a counter right hook. Like he landed a couple of good shots, but it was yeah. both the same punch. And then he started to rely on it. And then once it hits the ground, he he just didn't look like himself at all. I mean, for him to get was it rear naked? He got choked out. Is that that yeah. doesn't that just seems that like almost like that doesn't not seem like it fits with him, does it? Nah. Yeah. But the thing is with Cowboy, how decisively that Pettis beat him before? Didn't he whoop him with like a a liver kick? Yeah, body kick. Yeah. yeah. Le left kick to the body, I think. Yeah. But then you look at Cowboy, I, I would say, right, so Cowboy at welterweights, uh, I think he's a better version of himself. I would say the same about Pettis right now, but I don't think I don't think it adds anything to, to Pettis' game to be a welterweight. I just think it makes him better because he's not cut into lightweight. Whereas I think Cowboy's better at welterweight, and I think he's a better version of himself, himself as a fighter. And, and Cowboy's got, you know, got great rear naked chokes. I mean a lot of rear naked chokes on his record, he's probably looking at that and thinking he can replicate it. I just, I, I don't, 
the thing with Pettis now as well, he's like Pettis is he's a back foot fighter. He's you know, like the, the, the two fights I'm talking about in particular is Ferguson and Thompson, yeah. and in both fights, the shot that nearly knocked out Tony Ferguson was was very similar to the, to the timing of the one that knocked out uh, Wonderboy. Yeah. I mean, the Wonderboy one was a spring off the fence, yeah. but it was still he was moving back and he was under pressure, and it was a counter shot that kind of got him out of the trouble. Um, it- it kind of feels like Mick to me at the minute that is one of them lighters that you get that's been in your pocket forever and you've relied on it and relied on it. It's always been good. But then now it's got to the point where only every so often you see a little glimmer. It's only like, like you know, you're out in the woods and that's the only lighter you've got. And you're like, come on, baby, come on. And it just gives that one little burst. Yeah. That's the Superman punch that knocked out Thompson. That's just, just a faint glow just sitting on the top of the. Just, just got it going. Uh-huh. Yeah. But. It's not consistent enough as it used to be. It used to be like a fucking petrol Zippo. And now it's got to the point where it's like every so often, dude. And that's no disrespect to Pettis because he's a savage. But the thing is, it's that it's going back again to people's lives and what's happening to them. At one point, he's always having his cars petrol bombed and shit. Yeah, man. Remember that? That's sure. fucking, that's terrifying. And that's insane. And like, he had a nice house, nice cars, getting fucking petrol bombed. Like, yeah. That's legit stuff. So, I don't know if that was when stuff started trying to kind of to shift, but I don't know. I mean, if if he comes back as he was before because he's beat Cowboy and he knows he can do it again, and he knows he's like it's like if you had to refight any of the guys you fought before, you'd sort of have that little bit over him thinking, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And even if you do beat me, it's only one one. You still not fucking beat me. Mm-hmm. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. if he carries that little bit of swagger in there with him, but. It's just I like seeing Cowboy back. I just well, I just I just like seeing him seeing good fights and you, you kinda know you're gonna get a good fight. Yeah, yeah. There's this there's, there's some good ones on that one. There there are some good ones. Um uh, bars are against Michelle Waterson. That's a change in the guard, isn't it? Just I was just about to say that as well. That is that's another good one as well. Because Waterson's she's always kind of in and around that area where she could be a contender. For real. Not not quite, but almost there. But then as far as She's not quite good enough to get back to a, to a title shot, but she's a great litmus test for all of the other fighters coming up. I, I've, I, I've just, because we've got this strawweight to this strawweight title documentary coming out on the channel soon, um, which me and the Raptors have been working on. So okay. I, I went back and watched a lot of those old fights. And I, I'll be honest, like that first fight that she had against Rose in the tough finale, tough 20 finale, like Rose beat her in that first round. Like yeah. was, was was doing exactly what, um, you know, it, it, see what what's funny as well about watching it when you, because that's an interesting division. Given the fact that they, there are it's, it's a new newer division, and there are a few people that are all in the same weight class still that are still fighting each other. Yes, but like the pool's still moving around, and the, and and the people that have fought and been unsuccessful are learning and adapting and coming back better. Come and that seems to be the cycle that we're in at the moment of this division, which is cool. But they're also learning from each other. So, like, like Joanna watched the way that Rose was beating Andrade in the first few minutes of that, in the first round of that fight and did the same thing, replicated it over five rounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you can see the same, like, the things that Rose was doing well against Esparza in the first round of that fight, Joanna took to the extreme when she fought Esparza. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, they're all learning from each other, which, is, which I think is, is, is interesting to see. And I've not really noticed it until I started looking at the, the division picture. It does kind of feel like before it was almost like a cruel trick that the UFC did the ultimate fighter for that weight class of, of ladies that it was a good season. It was a really good season when Rose for um, Esparza. But the thing is, it was like they had Joanna locked away in a secret dungeon. It was like she was a, a, a fucking Polish experiment because when they were like, yeah, look, here you go, that's the new champion. Well done, Carla. And she was super happy about it. Had that custom one piece made, went out buying makeup and all the shit on there, embedded. She was fucking, she's the champ. And then they sort of unleashed Joanna into the division and it just went absolutely fucking bonkers. But the, the gap between Joanna and the division for so long was absolutely massive, wasn't it? So yeah. what you're saying now is they're all learning from that, which is... That's kind of even more impressive that you take it because you can only learn from seeing or from knowing it's a it's a possibility if that makes sense. Like 
Who the fuck would have thought you could backflip a BMX six times? <laughs> you can, but it's fucking hard. Yeah. And it's like, <clears throat> because there's like the strawweight division, the strawweight division was dropped in, in what, 2000 and, 2014? What, Rose? Uh, yeah, December. Was it 2000? I think, hang on, hang on, I've got the script in my Yeah, let me get it here, one sec. The, um, but the, basically, the, the point I'm, yeah, 2014. But the first fight in the strawweight division was in July, and the finale was in December. The, 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 the fights that happened in the strawweight division in July was Gadea against Tina Latamaki, I think, and Joanna against um, Juliana Lima. Okay. So when Esparza fought Rose in, um, in the main event of the finale to win the title, that was on the Friday night. The next day, Joanna was fighting Gadea for the number one contender spot. Oh, shit. So literally, as soon as Esparza got the belt around her waist, she was at the UFC the next day waiting to find out who her who number one contender was, which turned out to be Joanna. That's why Esparza was only only champ for 90-odd days. But that's It was almost like a ghost belt. You know, like on Mario Kart, when you try and beat your, your ghost? Yeah. As soon as that went around Esparza's waist, Joanna's, yeah, she, she stole a little bit of uh, Esparza for a while. I mean, she's, yeah. she's had a few good fights since, but at the time, I think it was a uh, it really fucking shook her up. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I mean, she, you could see how terrified she was when she was getting backed up, and every single effort that she made, she was getting punished for. Yeah, beautiful performance that was. But that, like, I've, I've got that script written up, so I'm going to record that once yeah. we're done this today I'll, and we'll get that out. I'll not... be interested, and then we've got to figure out what division we're doing next because. Uh, a lot of the other divisions, we're going to have to divide them into two shows because there's so much. So um, I think what we'll do is, I think, uh, and I've been chatting with the Raptors about it, I, I think what we're, we're going to do is uh, we'll divide at 2010 because there are a lot of divisions that started around the millennium. Yeah. We have a good 10 years of history that we can cover and then the part two of the show can be... So you're starting at 2010 or you're starting at 93? Starting at the beginning of the division. The reason no. the small weight one's going to be are going to be all in one show is because obviously it's it's a shorter division, but it's it's a cool I mean it's a cool story, man. I've, I've we, we we went through it. Jamie put together this wicked uh, video piece to kind of help me get my thoughts together on it, and now I've done that. Now I've watched that through and I've got the script and picked out sort of ten really important points uh, throughout the history of the division. It, it's a, it's a fascinating story, and and like we're kind of right in the middle of it now because the. The, the story's still open. Yeah. We've just had that amazing fight between Joanna and Wei Li, and we've got two contenders that were former champions that are potentially coming back into the mix, as well as, um, you know, the likes of Suarez and stuff. So, Well, to, to think as well for how long that Dana said he didn't want women to fight or he wasn't interested in women fighting. Mm. Is, I, I fucking love that narrative. And I know, obviously, a lot of it was down to, like, pay, uh, Paige fucking... Um, well Ronda and Misha, but imagine not having women's fights now. Like it'd be a travesty because the amount of times you watch it and it will save a card. Like I can't, I can't even remember. It's in my notes somewhere. But I saw a a fight, and it was literally the one that won the whole fucking night for me because you know what it's like. I don't want to gush about this card too much that we then jinx it by ending up with a shit card where everyone's just stared at each other because they're scared about like getting too close do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> Can you imagine that you've got a cage fight but you've got to stay two meters apart from each other it's like no worries like it's just and that, fucking out. and that goes Ultra for the as well man there you go I want, I want guest referees but in like a full hazmat suit or like the um you know the juggernaut suit that you get on call of duty <laughs> this one not with a chain gun, but just a big dude, just absolutely fucking locked down. Yeah. He's Mark Reppin. do well, because whenever there's one available, you always pass it on to me, because I can't seem to keep myself alive on that game. So, yeah, you, you wear this full suit of armour, you'll move at the speed of a snail, but no one will be able to kill you. <laughs> you can fuck everyone up. Thing is, that's it, I'm, I'm too busy. My brain's too busy running around constantly. I was playing the other night, and someone was... Me and David were sat there, and he was absolutely dominating this little area, but he was being very patient, and I felt like a kid that had gone to work with his dad. And I was like, 
can I uh, can I play with this drill? And he's like, no, you can't play with that drill. Okay, can I play with this? He's like, can I can I do this? Can I? And he was like, Just fuck off, will you? Just <laughs> like literally because I was stood with him and I was being patient, my his screen just kept getting covered with my leg, and so ultimately he died because I was in his way. So even though I was trying to help him, yeah. So I'm I'm too busy running around, man. There's a fucking I've just been text an an emergency notification. There's a 20 gig update on Call of Duty. <laughs> You've switched off your government notifications and updates. The the real serious stuff, but Mate, they're gone. Call of Duty updates are, uh, are on your phone. All I'm getting updates for at the minute is homework, Call of Duty, and whatever we're talking about in a group. But mm. what I've, the problem I've got with homework is I've quite luckily landed with Libby, and she's eight. So I've, I've noticed that my wife has put me in this position because she knows my ability is of an eight-year-old. So uh, the thing is, what's terrifying me, and this is a genuine fear, it's almost taking me back to being at school. I don't want to make eye contact with Stace because she might ask me a question about something that a year seven is studying, who's like a 12-year-old, and I won't know the answer. <laughs> Mate, she was doing long division and something, something maths earlier. And they were both, Stacey's basically got to teach herself a subject and then be able to work out how to break it down and teach it to our daughter, which is fucking impossible. Like Stacey's got this, the, she's a, an angel when it comes to this stuff. She takes it in and she deals with it. Whereas I just lose my shit after two seconds. So at the minute, um, uh, I've just realised that my position in the house is just making sure that basically an eight-year-old is getting on with their own maths mm. and can I mark it afterwards with a calculator when the kids aren't looking. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad, isn't it? That's really bad. Yeah, but, yeah, but your skills are, are in other places, Owen. This is what you got to remember. Well, that's it. I'm like, I could hustle them a Nintendo Wii if they want. I can, I can go out and right. score a deal. I can I do everyone's a good deal, but yeah. I, I don't yeah. mind drawing a do more on UFC 70. I bet they don't know that shit. Well, they know that Andre Olovsky's from Minsk, Belarus. But they've learned that from you. They have. That's it. See. Yeah, they take all my absolute cod shit nonsense to school with them. <laughs> yeah, but one day, one day they'll be sat in a pub doing a quiz and a question will come up and they'll be like, I know that. It's Andre motherfucking Olovsky. Andre oh, motherfucking Olovsky. Yeah, he's called <laughs> fucking Maximus. He died how, a three years ago. How has no one ever done that before? How has no one ever used that as their nickname? Motherfucking. Why, right? What I'm stuck... <laughs> That was I'm, an opportunity. Yeah, I'm stuck with Robinov. Could have been motherfucking Hardy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm stuck with Robinov. <laughs> Imagine. Uh, oh, well, there's, there's motherfucker Jones, isn't there, off uh, Horrible Bosses? Dude. Brilliant. I could literally watch that film over and over and over again. I think, well, Stace already knows it's because of Jennifer Aniston. Uh, if you grew up with Friends, the series, yeah. and you hear Jennifer Aniston say she fingered herself so hard she broke a nail... <laughs> inside you that just you just you can't get off Rachel Green at that point and be like I wonder if it was in Monica's bedroom <laughs> you know what I mean oh, yeah Dude. Oh, brilliant. and then she and then she went and stripped in um, We're the Millers yes another absolute classic yeah uh, you could wear fat granny pants yeah and then you hit then hit Horrible Wasses 2 again but this is <laughs> This is ideal um, lockdown. This is if you were like a 25-year-old stoner and lived on your own in a bed sit. Then you can just sit there and, and watch Jennifer Aniston in films. Or, or you could watch real porn, but Jennifer <laughs> Aniston, basically. I might watch, that. I might watch one of those today. They're, they're good movies. I tell, you, I tell you my favourite part in that, in that movie is when they, uh, when they drop the coke. <laughs> and they're like... I'm so, I'm, so, I'm so good at this. Yeah, and, he, and he's like, he's just like, wants to do push-ups. And he's like, all over his face. And he's like, he's like, what was he, what was it he said? I, like, if, like, I feel really good, but I, want, I also want to kill myself or my something. My productivity, but he's like, but my productivity is so high. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just so quick. And then Jason Bateman walks in and they're both just looking at each other. And he's like, what the fuck, guys? And he was, like, <laughs> he was off doing whatever he was having to do. They were getting absolutely slammed. Yeah. Genius, man. Film that. It's a good film that. Oh, have you watched the gentleman? Oh, anyway, else keeps popping up on Netflix, which I need to watch again. Is uh, Seven Psychopaths? Oh, dude, is that the one with Clooney? 
Uh, no, uh, that is that is that burn after reading. No, Seven Psychopaths is the one that's got Colin Farrell. That's it. For walking, um, Tom Waits is in it. They're in the desert for time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole scene in in the in the desert. Yeah, that's a brilliant movie. That is. You bastard! Oh no, Henry, come here. He does this thing when you tell him off. He smiles. Let me see if I can catch it. Can you see him? Yeah. This you. Did you do this? Can you see his little lips moving? Hey, I don't know. Mate, you know what's weird? Ear does the same thing. Henry. She doesn't look like she's smiling. She's, she doesn't like she was smiling. I was trying to explain this the other day. Like, if, if, you, if, you, do, if you say something to Ear it, and she's, she feels like she's being told off, she does the same thing. But, but the human expression is... Yeah. It's oh, a, a yeah, that's it. It's like sucking through your teeth. It's like... <laughs> What's he done? Oh no, chewed the nose off it. Chewed the nose off it. That sounds like some crisping dig on a Friday night in 2001. What's he done? <laughs> chewed the nose off it. Chewed the nose off fucking Ian Freeman. Uh, yeah. I took him for a walk before I came on the podcast and it was hooning it down. So they got wet. So they couldn't, he wasn't allowed upstairs with me before the podcast. So he's, he's come up now and he's not as wet. But he's found, I'm going to assume this guy is called Seely. Because Seeley. my kids, they're not that adventurous when it comes to, to Teddy's names. So, so it's probably called Seely or Pinky. But he's now fucked it. and So I'm going to have to hide this. Well, for, fortunately, fortunately for the seal, it's tripping balls. So it's probably got no idea what's going on. Look at his eyes. He's got pupils on that fucking thing. <laughs> Yeah, T.Y. Beanie Babies are fucking zooted off the fucking tits. Jesus. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it's still had coke on its nose, and that's what, uh, that's what he was drawn to. He's, Wait, he's, a, dog doing this. he's a dog doing push-ups. <laughs> Feels so fucking productive. Maybe that's why he's squinting. He's like, oh, I've still yeah. got coke in my teeth. <laughs> I'm not smiling, Dad. I just want to know if you've got any, uh, yeah. any of that good shit. <laughs> fucking hell, you absolute donkey dick. But yeah, well, so that's uh, that's what's going to happen. I'm going to have to try and hide. This is what happens in lockdown, man. It's like being in prison. I've got nowhere else I can take it to to physically get rid of it or find another one. But I will get caught out. They'll be without a doubt. They'll all of a sudden remember that they own this and they'll need it before they can go to sleep. Or out the window. That will land in our garden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Tie a bit of string around its tail and throw it out the window so it's far enough so you can't see it. And then lock and then, it. And then lock it and tie the bit of string to something inside the house. I might just let him find it when they're up here so then they can discover it and be like, oh, God, Henry! And he'd be like, mm, mm. if you knew the truth, I did it earlier, but Dad don't want to tell you. Yeah. Good, good thing you're not allowed to watch the podcast because he's too much swearing on it. <laughs> he doesn't oh, even he's, care. He's having a good time. Are you fucking, honestly, mate, the, the amount of walks... Mate, it's a... It's a good thing there are no dogs at this house at the moment because the amount of Lego that's scattered all over the floor. Yeah. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm not allowed to have mine out with the dogs in the room because Ernie's all, he just hoards. He just takes the best bits and he puts... He doesn't chew them, but he just moves them. And then because he's very protective because he's a bit older and I rescued him, he feels like he owes me his life. Mm. So if any other dog does anything around me that I look slightly displeased with, he marches in like a fucking... Like, armed guard. He's like Stone Cold Steve Austin on that um, Longest Yard. Do you know with Adam Sandler? Yeah. Not, not Longest Yard with Adam Sandler. Is it Longest Yard? Could be. Yeah, he's, the football one. Yeah, bursts in. He's like, oi! We'll not have any fun around here. He's your yeah. back. Yeah, he's my back. Uh, unless he's eating fucking Seely's face. <laughs> Poor Seely. I'm going to Seely. have to find a nose. This is going to end up with like a fucking substitute shit bear nose off one of my teddies from when I was a kid. <laughs> Stick, stick, a reptile reptile pin on it. Reptile pin on it. They won't notice. Imagine. Yeah, I'll put it on Instagram. Well, before we, before, we wrap this up, before we wrap this up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through into my office and show you what I've been working on. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, put it in so you can't see the master of the house. It's such a mess. No, hang on. I'll show you. This is, this is my Lego. <laughs> My Lego station. Nice. Boxes to be built. Tables going. 
and I've got this is all my spare bits because I'm building old sets like there's bits that are missing as I'm okay. building like you know as I'm building like Robin Hood's treehouse and stuff I remember robbing bits for other projects I was working on however and and a new and a new thing came through today which you're gonna you're gonna dig so this is my cabinet right now with so I've got can you see this shall I turn a light on would that be easier I can see it, but it's only it's slightly pixelated. But we're getting the we're getting the gist. If you want to put a light on, oh nice! So top shelf pirate stuff. Just lock your screen, huh? Just lock your screen. How do I do that? Just press the side button so that your screen's not illuminated, but the torch is still on. Oh, gotcha! Like that. There you go. So I've got all the pirate stuff in the top. Nice. Lower down. Got all the castle stuff. Dude, you've been fucking busy since I saw you. Right. Castles. I've got Merlin shit over the back there. I've got some, got some dragons. There's Robin Hood's tree or four at the back. Then down here, i got the Viking castle. That's rare, right? Isn't it? Very rare. And then I've got the Lord of the Rings, Helm's Keep. And, there's, and then I've got another castle to build up still. And then in this cabinet over here, which is just general stuff, I gotta show you this new 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 uh check that new Boba Fett, the white one. Whoa, where's he from? He's from the internet and he's very, very rare. Mate. So I was very pleased when that arrived. So how, many, how many Boba Fetts have you got now? How many what? Boba Fett. Oh jeez. Um well I've got the I've got the alarm clock and the big buildable figure. And then I've got three different types of key rings and three different dates of Boba Fett. And I've got the minifigure in about four different versions. I've got the white one now. I've got the helmet and I've got the brick head. You seen this? Yeah, they're weird, aren't they? But they're kind of cool as well. Yeah. Well, we got, I'm not sure these are on Veronica's Instagram, but we've got uh, two stormtroopers, a red or white stormtrooper, and Carlo Ren. And we've got uh, Darth Vader on his way as well. Yeah, man. And then oh, yeah, and I was showing my Star Wars cabinet, which you saw, didn't you? See, it's nice now because it's all in colour so we can see it. So appreciate that mystery. <laughs> well, you saw the top. There's the got boats on the top. Yeah. Turn the torch back on again because you can. I mean, this is. Mate, look at that. Looks kind of cool with the torch light, dude. Does it? Yeah. I need to get some lights in here. Boba's, I got Boba's Palace, and I've got the Rancor pit underneath. Got my Millennium Falcon. Is is the Rancor pit underneath uh, yeah. the palace in proportion? Is it like where it would be for the trap to land? Have you yeah. got that anal? Yes. Good. Thank you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> I've, even, I've got a hole in the glass. Good. <laughs> Yeah, man. Thing is, it's, there's so many things that I want to collect, but I've got my, it's just such an addictive personality that I end up just buying so much shit that I don't need. It's like states will go, "Have you had any dinner today?" And it's like I've not eaten for four weeks because I bought a new fucking Lego set. <laughs> but I can justify that. That'd be all. Well, I'm sitting there. Oh, talking of eating, the person. Well, you were talking about PhD bars. You remember them um, protein bars that you had? I messaged Nath after we spoke because I felt such a bastard. Because obviously he had very generously hooked us up with a load of bars. And it was fucking really nice of him. He's a super nice guy. And I couldn't remember his name on the podcast. So I messaged him to say, dude, I'm so sorry. I completely your name just because his name is uh, Nathan PhD or something like that. Nath Chan PhD. So it, it's not like it's just someone's name. Yeah. So because I knew I knew how to find him straight afterwards, but I felt like a prick. So that was Nathan. So thank you, dude. It was like you are keeping Dan going in this uh, time of crisis. So that's his shout out. No, no, no. I'm keeping them going. They're keeping me fueled, but I'm I'm invested in their company. There you go. I they, mean, well, I'm that... in this year. There's no freebies coming in. So <laughs> just so everyone on the podcast is aware, I'm buying these yeah. bars because yeah, I like sorry. the taste. Although the, them. the dark chocolate cherry, I'm not allowed to eat them. Apparently, they, they smell too bad. Oh, really? What? Yeah. Second I, don't mind, I don't mind the taste of them personally, but apparently they, they smell so bad that no, I'm not allowed to order them again. So that's in the evening? Yeah. 
Right. Looking at pins the other day, I've obviously I've been going through everything in the house. So there's loads of cupboards and stuff I've not looked in for a while. Check out the old Outlaw pack. The Outlaw oh, Outlaw pack. Who made those? Uh, I think they were made by a, by a record label, Death Wish, I think. I think it was. I remember it, I remember it being a thing, but I obviously wasn't particularly involved at the time. Mm. But I, I've got them. Yeah, they're awesome. They're very cool. Yeah, I've got them, but... Right, a couple of things I was going to tell you about. Go on, then. One thing which spun me out like fuck, and imagine this, it's an eight-year-old asking me this. She's an eight-year-old, she just got out of the bath, and my wife's drying her hair. Not a random eight-year-old, it's my daughter. And <laughs> um, she turned to me, and she, she couldn't stop laughing because she'd been sat in the bath farting, right? And her question to me at that point was, can you fart out of your penis? Would that... <laughs> Why did that thing happen at that moment? <laughs> <laughs> it was my dick doing a little fart. <laughs> Just if it was like a penny whistle, like a... Oh, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? How, how, do, how do I answer this? Obviously, it's a fucking no, but... Like, where did the... I wouldn't have asked my mum that question back in the day. I don't know if I've just given these kids too much confidence because she just said, "Yo, Dad, can you um, can you shoot whistles out of your old man?" <laughs> no, mate. Does it sound like this, Dad? That's, that seems like that seems like exactly the kind of question that your girls would ask you. Yeah, and I gave them a straight answer. I didn't give. I, I didn't go further. I didn't tell them that or show them. I just told well, them. I, well, I can't, but I'll ask around. Yeah. <laughs> Mystery can do the whole of fucking, um, what's it? A any of Queen's back catalogue. <laughs> In the key of C. <laughs> yeah, so that fucked me up. And then what I've noticed, and this is, this is more just to, to gauge people's reaction. When you go shopping, I know you're not really going shopping. When I go shopping, I noticed the other day, it feels like the whole planet is playing a massive game of what time is it, Mr. Wolf? So, do you remember the what time is it, Mr. Wolf game? Everyone's creeping up on each other. Everyone's creeping up, and then if you turn around, you have to stop. Yeah. But I was in Aldi the other day, and I was fucking with this person for about 25 minutes because I was creeping with my trolley, but I turn around. And then, then keep going again, and it gets to the end, and I was like, yeah, good game of Mr. Wolf, dude. And this guy was terrified, like, looking at me like I was going to murder him. Mate, I, I was at I was at this. I actually went shopping this morning, and I'm at, I'm at this. I'm at the supermarket, and I walk past one person who. I mean, the thing is, like, the, the idea of of like limiting the amount of people in the store, I just don't get the point of it because if one person with coronavirus goes into the store, it's in the fucking store. It's yeah. on everything they touch. It's on the air that they've breathed out. You know what I mean? It's like, it, it, it like two meters is not gonna make that much fucking difference, surely. So. So I'm, I'm, so I'm not too bothered. And about 80% about of the people that are around, I, I don't seem to be that bothered as well. They're respectful about the distance, but they're not weird about it. Yeah. But then there are a few people that are weird. Yeah. And there was this, like, I'm in the aisle. There's this one bloke that's doing a bit of shopping, and we've kind of walked around each other a couple of times. So a little bit of distance, but as much distance as you can give in an aisle. So I've walked around him a couple of times and he's walked around me. And now I'm in a position where he's at one end of the aisle. I'm in the middle. And this paranoid woman is like standing at the other end of the aisle waiting for space to be created. So I'm looking at her and I'm like, and, and I can see that there's a dilemma in her eyes because I'm stuck. Yeah. Like, oh, shit, he's stuck between me and that other person. I'm not stuck in my head. No. I'm not stuck in his head either. No. I'm, I'm, head, I'm stuck. So I'm like, so you're going to stay there and like leave me stuck in this aisle. The full world that you're the one that's going to be keeping me stuck in it. I'm like, I'm coming in your direction. <laughs> Move. <laughs> and she, like, she's seen like, like she climbing up onto the coffee on the racks and shit. Like, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Like, it's going to be all right. Everything's that coffee, covered in Corona. <laughs> I'm clean. <sighs> Mate, I would have fucked with her. I'd have fucked with her for quite a while, I think. I'd have been sat there singing closing time, even if it was like four o'clock. Come on. Do you know well, what I mean? Well like, what what I, what I should have done is I should have I should have stood I should have stood behind her in, in the in the in the aisle as, as she's as she's like waiting. I'm I'm like the next line behind her in the checkout waiting to go up. 
and I'll just stand next to the eggs and I'll get one one box of eggs that I intend to buy, but I'll just stand next to them and just take them out of the box, just going. Just all the way in like a ping pong just ball. Just every one of them, just off. <laughs> <laughs> just off. <laughs> and look at it as I'm doing it and then put them back on the back on the shelf. Start asking it to pass you stuff. It's, people, it's always going to be fucking weird from this point on, isn't it? Honestly. And like I was saying the other day, I watched... I watched an event and I saw someone coming out of the tunnel to go to the cage and there's a crowd and I'm like, I can't fucking work that out at the minute. That's fucking mental. Yeah. They? And then when he hugs his trainer. Oh, come on. Oh, we got her. <laughs> she just always walked to the kitchen with a full face mask on. And she got two halves of a broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You'll never guess what I've made these. I've made tomfers. No, it's a broken... <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Uh, right. Well, I'm going to do some recording of this voiceover stuff. Wicked. Well, how long have we got? It's next weekend, isn't it? We've not got anything this weekend. It's next weekend. Next weekend. So what? we'll have a, we'll have a, we'll have a good catch up. What day is it today? Wednesday. I don't know. I think uh, it's the weekend or Monday or something. Yeah. Some stories coming out soon. Anyway, when when the card starts to get some promotions, so that'd be interesting. I'm interested to see how people are training and where they're training. Well, that's, that's what I think is going to help for someone like Cruz. Because yeah. the thing is, if someone stepped up to Cruz in home, Whole Foods, if he's got a little bit of gangster in him, he's going to fuck him up without <laughs> even thinking. Yeah. If he's, if he's got to be paid to get in a cage and fight someone, he's going to worry how, how his knees are feeling. For but, sure. They'd the, 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 the feel, the feel nauseous, though, from him fucking running around them all the time. Like, old still, man. Well, he's just doing that weird, like, me, myself and Irene dance. You know, <laughs> you know when me, myself and Irene, and he's... <laughs> that's that's cruise all day and the guys are yo are you, are you all right yeah I'm fine you're on the money <laughs> i'd quite like him to commentate like that Can you yeah. imagine he's with like with joe rogan and dc or someone and you just turn to cruise and he's like i think it's all over it is it is all over all right cruise sit down <laughs> yeah, i'm looking forward to it man i'm just i'm just hoping that it'll work don't you come creeping now fuck face what did you do? Tell tell Dan, what did you do? Oh, it's all right, buddy. We'll send a new pink tripping seal over to you. Trippy the seal. Oh, man. Well, it's good seeing you all anyway. And uh, have a nice few days. And I'm sure I'll catch up with you before then anyway. Absolutely, mate. Sounds good. Wicked. All right, Take mate. Everybody listening, catch you soon. Bye-bye.